If you are a developer or an infrastructure engineer, high chances you're seeing a rise of AI coding assistant tools. However, they come with a trade-off. The trade-off of generating code at speed over quality. However, it doesn't have to have a trade-off. Hi everyone, my name is Shan. In this video, I'm going to showcase five AI coding assistant tools which will help you become more productive and generate faster, better quality code. Now, whether you are a solo developer or a QA or a product enthusiast, you'll be able to understand out of these five tools, when should you use what tool and when should you consider for testing, when should you consider these tools for generating code. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, the first one in the list is Codogen. Now, I have been working with one of my um, platform engineer wherein we've been able to find a subtle bug which we just identified before pushing onto the production. Now what it does, what this JavaScript code does, uh, it it is part of the, our new product wherein we are providing online editor. We as a developer have forgotten to catch a bunch of issues. Now what I'm going to ask do is, on the left hand side on my favorite code editor which is Visual Studio Code, I'm going to code it click on Kodo, I'm going to say, I've already given a context over here, you can give entire folder or a single file as well. In this case, I've just given the single file, which is .s, you can just change, keep changing the context over here, all right, files or folder as you can see. I've just given the file, I'm just going to say, probably explain, you can use the shortcut or you can just type in as well. So what it's going to do is, it's going to analyze the code base, it's going to let me, okay, this is an asynchronous function to sequentially update a document's title and content so it's basically a online document editor um, I'm gonna ask is tell me how many endpoint this function has perhaps got so I don't know how many endpoints it has got all right it just starts scanning it and it just tells me that there are two endpoints both of them are post endpoints one is updating the title and updating the content. So title is the top of the doc and then the content. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask it to refactor. Could you refactor and combine both the endpoints for me? So what it's gonna do is it's gonna, certainly here's the refactored version where it's trying to update and combine both the endpoint, which is title and the content, but that's not the, end game it's really good is to generate test cases for this specific scenario to handle potential issues i want to figure it out, figure out three test cases so i'm going to type that out as well so i'm going to say can you generate test cases to handle three things first test is Simultaneous update. The second one is update in correct order. And three is probably rollback or retry mechanism, which I have completely missed. As soon as I give the prompt, it started analyzing the code base. It started to generate the test cases. This case is one, and then start making sure that update has the test cases have has got the update in correct order and then it has a test case for roll bay, rollback or retry scenarios as well. Once that's done, either I can copy or insert uh, it. You can just click on insert, it'll insert, or you can just copy uh, the recommendation, figure out if you're if you're kind of comfortable making the changes and then you're good to go. All right, this is how a tiny issues could have created a snowball effect in the production. We were just able to avoid it using Codogen. Give it a spin, link is in the description. All right, the next one up is Cursor. This one actually, it's it has got its own ID. Now think of it like Visual Studio Code extended version of, there's a, there's a little bit of learning curve, but if you've used to use uh, Visual Studio Code, there shouldn't be a lot of problem. You get autocomplete, refactoring, an explanation, and a bunch of other features. So let me just open, fire up the chat bar. So as you can see on the, on the right hand side, you get the chat bar, 
which gives you an option to select the agent or you can select the context as well for now or you can give the entire context you can go over here files and folders and you can just give the entire code base. what I've done is I've got a website um, and I'm giving the entire folder uh, context to cursor um, since it has got its own editor functionality it comes uh, with all the AI native uh, features so let's say I want to say find the number of pages in the code base I'm new to the new to the um, uh, team and I don't know how many components are there how many pages are there so I don't want to go into sitemap and all of those things I want cursor to read my entire code base and figure that out for me all right it's saying I can see a lot of pages apps directories all right it's kind of uh, still progressing it's it has figured out some directories in the app folder and then service directories and other directories as well it is saying now it is checking the other additional pages all right it has finished figuring out it has got 25 pages which is uh, i would i would kind of trust cursor for that so it has got home page rising page contact faq book a demo and all of those things now what i want is book a meeting link which i want to replace with a new one could you replace all the book a meeting button link with my new Calendly link, which is perhaps HTTPS slash Calendly. Obviously, it's a pseudo Calendly link. Book a demo. All right. So as soon as I give the prompt, it's going to say yes it will help you help us to replace the book a meeting button figuring out all the pages places where the calendar link might be now as you can see over here you can accept or stop as well i'm going to click on the page i'm going to go to book a demo page and it will directly take me to the page and now from here i can replace or i can just select the uh, changes as well all right, that's pretty much all. I hope this was helpful for you. At least it was super helpful because I'm new to the project. I did not know where things are going. All right, next one in the list is Lovable. Now, if you want to build real quick prototypes, Figma-like prototypes, you've probably not been doing a lot of development lately. This one is for you. So you can go to lovable.dev. Let's suppose I want to build... a. Uh, a landing page for an authorization startup so i'm going to say build a landing page or rather sign up page for an authorization company okay for the sake of simplicity so what's going to happen is in the background it's going to generate a bunch of code base on the right hand side you can see it has a seamless first class integration with superbase obviously you can if you i keep saying that it's tend to it's for more of non coders however if you still want to get your hands dirty you can still export your code base and, and start uh, tinkering around the code base as well first thing first it is generating hero.tsx file which is and then going to create a sign up form as well all right it has got a bunch of errors it is trying to uh, it is try, try to do something it has at least uh, uh, generated try to generate the first sign up page and then it is trying to define the syncs and everything all right it has looks like it has done something okay it has uh, uh, got some branding over here it has got some features over here and then the first name last name and then some sort of uh, compliance as well i'm going to ask can you also add github login so what i want since i i want my developers okay what i'm going to ask is i'm going to ask it to add a sign up functionality with github as well can you add a login with github or twitter as well so what should happen is over here over sign up it should have a button for twitter and github as well okay so what's trying to do is it's trying to first fix the typescript error and then 
uh, add GitHub and Twitter login. So, I mean, this this is a typical scenario wherein you'll you'll keep figuring out that there are a bunch of issues these tools are getting into, and then kind of trying to you'll have to give some sort of iteration so that it is able to achieve the results which you want. All right, so it is able to it was able to fix the TypeScript error and it was able to generate the add the GitHub and Twitter button as well. Let's go and check it out. Bingo! Over here you can see GitHub and Twitter button over there. All right, so that's it for lovable i call this for tools a platform specifically super helpful for influencers tiktokers who can just who have certain set of followers and probably get started with uh, building their prototype for their product or merchandise real quick from lovable to replit now if you are somebody who want to build prototype real quick however if you want to run your development in kind of a sandbox environment or in the cloud and want a little more control over what's happening in the background this one is for you this one is for developer who wants to write code on the browser or on the phone uh, i'm going to do the same i'm going to probably build a same app which i did with lovable so i'm going to say can you build an, an authorization page or sign up page for a uh, for an authorization company okay sign up page i'm gonna build uh, all right my pr prompt is perfect i'm gonna hit on chat um and then it's gonna it's gonna start um, developing what i've just prompted all right it is generating the relevant pages for us in the background so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna approve the plan and on the right hand side you can start seeing what's happening all right you can build and you can deploy as well what you see over here you've got agents you can you can select your agents you can preview your app you can click on the console you can create a database and you can um, kind of uh, get hold of other tool bases as well what i'm really interested in is i'm gonna probably open the file so once it has started to generate as you can see on the right hand side it started to generate the app for me and it has got the uh, branding on the top right top left on the right it has got the signing page and then the first name last name and it is generating side by side the the company size and the create account page as well on the, it's uh, trying to add the footer also now it is, it is saying that it's fully SSL encrypted uh, and SOC 2 compliant as well. All right, so it has almost finished generating the page for us, and on unlike Lovable, it has given you the all the code base as well. It has given you the SRC folder, shared server, config TypeScript, and white on TS config as well. You can go ahead and start figuring out. Uh, textual changes or code base changes as well so you can go and figure out where the the particular text is and start pair programming or start making changes parallelly on the browser itself so it's more for somebody who loves to wipe code however they want access to a flavor to the code base as well whether on your phone or on your laptop Hope this was informative i'll see you in the next one all right, last one in the list is V0. Now, if you're more of a front-end player, front-end developer, and you've got a Vercel ecosystem, this one is for you. Uh, it doesn't quite work well with the back-end. However, if you've got your front-end stuff, uh, as you can see in the screen, uh, pretty similar UI on the left-hand side, a bunch of features. On the prompt, what I'm going to say, I'm going to, again, for the sake of clarity and apples-to-apple -apple comparison, I'm going to type in same. Can you create a sign up page for an authorization company all right I'm, I'm i'm just gonna type that and let it wait to generate uh what i wish to get it all right on the right hand side you can see it has started to generate the sign up uh, typescript page um, on the left hand side it can see that version it has started to generate the version as well uh, one thing obviously versal is pretty since it's part of the versal ecosystem versal is pretty good with deployments right so it is what it is doing is it's creating different versions you can always go back to the previous version if you wish to so got in the sign up page uh, page dot script as well it has uh, generated on the 
got a different pretty pretty clean ui like it the most out of all however if i ask to can you connect with backend in go as well might not be super helpful let's just try if it something has changed over the last couple of days right on the left hand side you can see it has generated another version you can always roll back to the previous version previous version as well you can see a restore button over here and you can always restore as well as you can see it has just generated the code there's no connection or integration as such is you can you can, you can see that it's not a pretty great with when it comes to backend however if you you want to generate quick landing pages clean minimalistic ui v0 is for you so i i don't want uh, the backend code base right now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click on view and I'm just gonna go back to the second version It's fairly it. Uh, so I hope this was informative Go ahead and try that on your system and let me know which one works best for you so all of these tools help you in different kind of setup and scenario for example you already have a code base you have your code base deployed on production and you want more of your code reviews tools like Code Gen help you to find improve code coverage, generate a lot of edge cases and figuring out those risky patterns, which is probably impossible to figure out on your own or are doing a lot of reviews, especially when generating a lot of code. However, if you want to quickly build Figma like prototype, Lovable could be, or if you are probably an influencer or somebody who just want to build a quick e-commerce app, use Lovable. Uh, if you want a full-blown ID, AI-powered ID, go for Cursor. However, if you want to code on phone or a browser, use probably Replit. If you're coming from a React or Versal kind of an ecosystem, go for V0. So all of these tools, all of these five tools serve different purposes. One for one, one is absolutely championing in the code review and test cases scenario. Other one kind of helping you to generate quick mockups, really quick. So I hope this is super informative. Comment down which one is your favorite tool. And in case if we have not listed your favorite tool, please comment so that we can list them in the next one. If you want a full detailed comparison of all of these five tools, there is already a blog which has been written. Please go ahead and check out the description and happy coding. See you in the next one.